Where are Jamaican people from? This is a question that I'm going to be answering in today's video. For some quick background, I am Jamaican. I'm first generation Canadian. Both of my parents are born in Jamaica, but I consider myself Jamaican because that's just the culture I grew up around and in. I'm a curious person, so I've always kind of wondered where Jamaicans are really from. I'm aware of the slave trade and that like my ancestors are from Africa but to me that was just too broad and I'm also aware that Jamaica like our population is made up of you know different ethnicities and backgrounds for numerous reasons and I'm like where are those people from like what's going on all these different ethnicities and races from you know obviously the Afro Jamaicans to the Chinese Jamaicans to Middle Eastern Jamaicans Indian Jamaicans so I want to know exactly where we are from and what brought all of these different um, ethnicities, races to the island of Jamaica. So through extensive research, I have been unpacking and have unpacked where exactly my people are from and I will be sharing it with you guys in today's video. So just jumping right in, the very first people to inhabit the island of Jamaica were the Tainos, who are the indigenous people of Jamaica. So they originally arrived by canoe from Belize as well as the Yucatan Peninsula. And the Taino people are also found in the Dominican Republic, Haiti, and Puerto Rico. I hear them reference their Taino heritage and culture often. So way after the Tainos inhabited Jamaica, which was then known as Zamaica, Zamaca. So it was spelled X-A-Y M-A-C-A, -A, which was a Taino word for um, land of wood and water, which is pretty cool. And you know, I love the original name. I wish Jamaica had kept it, but you know, colonizers. So the very first Europeans to arrive in Jamaica were the Spanish in May of 1494. So that was essentially Christopher Columbus and his crew of colonizers. The European colonizers arrived and practically wiped out the entirety of the Taino population with their foreign European diseases. To me it's just insane, like what kind of diseases could you be bearing that can wipe out an entire population? Like that's gross. The very first Spanish settlement was first established in 1523 and it is the area that we still know as Spanish Town in Jamaica today. Now here's when the African history in Jamaica begins when the Spanish colonizers brought over millions of slaves from West Africa to Jamaica. Slaves were brought over from Nigeria and Ghana most prominently. So for those of us who may know our DNA through either doing a ancestry DNA um, test or 23andMe, most of us have Nigerian or Ghanaian, more times both ancestry um, in our DNA because um, that was the majority of the West Africans that were brought to specifically the island of Jamaica but um, tons of Nigerians and Ghanaians were also brought to the other islands as well as Brazil. It is estimated that nearly 750,000 enslaved African people were brought to Jamaica between 1655 and 1807. So it makes so much sense that 92% of Jamaica's population are of West African heritage. Um, Jamaica for the most part is a prominently African nation. So again, to get even more specific, the slaves that arrived were primarily from the west coast of Africa and mostly from the Gold Coast which was then referred to as the Gold Coast but is now referred to as Ghana in modern day and Biafra which is now primarily Nigeria. The research indicates that the Igbo people, the Ibibio and the Oyo account for 40%, 40%, nearly half of the slaves that were shipped to Jamaica between 1700 and 1800. And get this, I also read that plantation owners preferred slaves from the Gold Coast and the Bight of Biafra, which are now modern day Ghana and Nigeria, because the mortality rates from these particular African groups um, after the arduous journey across the Middle Passage, which we knew was just, we all know was just atrocious, um, their mortality rate, despite all of that, was not high which is why they, you know, prefer to get the slaves from there. Patwa has a lot of Igbo influence, which I think is pretty cool, as well as Akan influence, which is a tribe in Ghana. So, for example, 
the word ono, which means like you all is a evil word. So that's pretty cool. And now I want to ask my evil friends if like they know that word because apparently it's an evil word. It feels really good to know that we were able to retain and hold on to some aspects of our identity and our heritage despite being robbed of so much. I also read that the Jamaican swag, so the way that we carry ourselves, um, a lot of it is also influenced by Igbo culture. So for example, karai, which in Igbo is referred to as Iro Anya, is um, something that you know Igbo people do commonly. So that was pretty cool to learn. Another thing Jamaicans commonly do is kiss our teeth and that's directly linked to um, the Igbo tribe, which is just so cool. But the Igbo attribute that we as Jamaicans have that I found absolutely hilarious that was identified is the general air of importance. Um, that apparently is um, of Igbo influence because they apparently carry themselves in a way that, you know, screams I am important, kind of like, you know, I'm royalty, I'm too good for this, I'm the best. And that is definitely the pride hands down that we as Jamaicans have. Like, we just have such pride in our people and our culture and it's so funny to see that um, that's like a link to how evil people carry themselves. Speaking of vernacular, which I could definitely do a whole other video on this, but um, what is often overlooked is the Mali slash Senegambia influence on Patois. One of the most basic words that we use daily is Nyam, which for those of you who are not Jamaican, Nyam means to eat. So that is actually a Fulani word. And another word that is directly from the Fulani language that we use in Patois is the word juk. So because of the characteristics of the culture um, that these ancestors had brought, modified, and preserved, historians have been able to identify um, these forest migrations, including many of the Maroon people, as Coromantis. So those are actually people from the Akan culture, which is presently known as Ghana. So quick history lesson for those of you who don't know who the Maroon people are or what they are. They were um, slaves who rebelled and went into the hills and kind of made their own society that was closed off from all European invasion and influence and they fought the Europeans many times and were just non-compliance and you know ultimately um, were a big part in fighting for our freedom and independence. Thankfully because the Maroons retained so much of their um, African culture we're able to more easily trace exactly where Jamaicans are from in Africa through um, just the culture. So in the earliest years of the British settlement, the Coromantis, so the Akan people, were known to be the most stubborn and yet the most respected, which again, it sounds, you know, super familiar and I'm not at all surprised because Jamaican people are known to essentially not take any foolishness and we definitely have a strong backbone but you're gonna respect us. So outside of the Taino people, the Europeans and the West Africans, Jamaica's population is also made up of the Indians from India, um, Chinese people, Syrian slash Lebanese people as well as some workers from Germany and Ireland came over to the island eventually. So we are essentially an amalgamation of all of those ethnic groups but for the majority we are a of West African descent. So the Europeans that arrived in Jamaica later on were primarily Germans, Irish people, as well as Scottish people, and they came as workers. And um, there's actually a community in Jamaica that is called Seaford Town that is filled with descendants of those workers. So not all of the white people in Jamaica are direct descendants of slave owners. Some of them are descendants of white people from Europe who just came to work. So the Asian immigrants from India came as indentured workers. Um, brief history lesson, once slavery was abolished in Jamaica, the plantation owners, the colonizers, they still needed people to work for them, to work their land, to make money for them. So they um, pretty much had a bunch of workers from India come over. It wasn't called slavery this time, it was called indentured work. So essentially work 
that you would do and in return you would get paid crumbs, pennies. Yeah, the conditions weren't um, ideal at all. So just, I guess, a, um, a watered down version of slavery. And eventually, some years later, workers came from what is now known as Lebanon. Um, Jamaicans commonly refer to Lebanese people as Syrians, so you'll probably hear a lot of, you know, Jamaican people referring to having Syrian ancestry. Yeah, those were the Lebanese people that came over to Jamaica to work. So yes, that is where Jamaican people come from, and I personally am super proud of my West African lineage that makes up most of my ancestry and my DNA. I think it's so beautiful and I'm so happy to still have so much of a connection through my culture to my original home, the home of my ancestors in West Africa. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please do not forget forget to leave a thumbs up that helps me out so much so that YouTube pushes my video out into the algorithm so that other people can see it um, if you're not yet subscribed please go ahead and click that subscribe button down below to see more videos like this and yeah thank you so much for watching I'll see you guys next week with a new video